The battlefield is in the mind. Yeah, of course it is. And the funniest thing about fights is the mind. Yeah. A lot of spiritual fight in the mind. They need to go to church and get clean in their mind by the blood of Jesus. Yes. The blood cleans the mind. Yeah. And that they don't know that. No, 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 no. It's a shame. But but I, I tell you, you know what? I feel I accomplished something here. Three yeah, years ago. Nice. Now there's a gentleman in here. Remember I was telling you he was drinking like $250 a weekend? Well, he's got clear eyes today. He said that last week he started thinking about it. He's coming down. He's still drinking. Yeah. But little by little made little his walk. Yes. Then they brought. How are you doing, this up? Hey, how you doing? Little by little bit. Yeah, but he looks better, so I feel like I accomplished something. Even one person is better than nothing, right? That's right. Little by little bit. That's right, yeah. But the thing is, people don't know what we're doing. No, you're right. They get drunk. Yeah, yeah. They get drunk. See, this is God's love. Yeah, you're that's God. Yeah. That's just the heart of Yeah. That's not good. You give you what I you say nothing. Uh, yeah. She loves you. Yeah, exactly. And you can't pray so you can't thank him, you can't glorify him. Yeah. You see? Absolutely. Shame. Yeah. Mind, mind. I know. People they uh um people are people. people. But you're but you're you're a soldier in, in the war. The war of uh, spreading the news and, and you just keep going. Yeah, you know? because they, they don't understand this. Somebody's closing their eyes for the last time. So why not praise God every day for that? So. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for bread. Thank yeah. you for getting bread. I know. Anything. Anything about giving you nothing. Because mine is nothing. Yeah. But you just you just keep pushing it, pushing it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to let them know yeah. the truth. And I'm going to be here Thanksgiving. All right. All right? I'm going to try to walk around and see if I can catch some people. Okay. All right. Talk to you in a little bit. Hi, how you doing? Can I give you one of these? Um, I'm an addiction recovery coach. I help people that have drug and alcohol addictions, and for free, I'll coach you. If you know anybody, I'll show you. Yeah, here's my business card. And because of the uh, church, yeah, I'm doing it for free. But if you know anybody that has any drug, or even if you know people that are overdosed or something, I'm on TV. Okay. So uh, if you ever want to tell your story, I'm on channel 11. I'm also on YouTube, 150 videos. Okay. You can tell your story. You don't have to give your name. You don't even have to go on camera. Okay. Okay? All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. You guys heard the pastor was talking and it is all about giving to the people helping people that's what it really comes down to so folks there's not many people out here on the road today but i'm going to try my best to spread the news good morning can i give you one of these please I'm an addiction recovery coach. I'm trying to clean the name of up with drugs and alcohol. And for free, that I'm trying to coach people on how to do it and how to live with it. If you know anyone, I'm also on TV and on YouTube. We do videos. Anytime that you have a story, if you know somebody and they can possibly overdose, you just call me. You don't have to give your name or your face. It's all just to try to help people, okay? Thanks. Hey, how you doing? Can I give you one of these? You drink alcohol or do drugs? Um, no, no. If you know anybody, call. If you know anybody that drinks too much or does too much this, call me. For free, I help. And you can, I can put you on my on a camera on TV and talk about it. If you know people that drink too much or do too much alcohol, okay? Uh, but just call that number. It's okay. help. Okay. Okay. okay thank, thank you. you. Well, if 
people are different here this morning. But uh, let's see if we can catch some people at this end. Have a good day, guys. Beautiful, crispy day. Well, I see some people down there by the church. So let's see if we can talk to them. Let's see what's going on. Oh, my banging against the phone here. yesterday, only 11 more Fridays till Christmas. Unbelievable. Hey, how you doing? Were you able to hand those things out for me? Remember, remember the alcohol addiction and drug oh, addiction? Oh, yes. I stopped. I dropped some off at yes, USA great, gas great. station. Andy Pink um, track. And, uh... Perfect. Thank you. Hopefully uh, somebody read it. If you want a couple more, I'll give you one of my cards. Sure. sure. It's all for free. And uh, whoever has an addiction, they can end up on TV too. Because I'm on Channel 11 and yeah, yeah, yeah. 100 Yeah, well, listen, you don't have to give your face or your name. It's just so uh, you can go on audio. But you know everybody, okay? Thanks a lot. No problem. Do you need me to give out more hands? Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, because I'm going to be going to my friend's house. So I can drop some more of the traffic. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Right. Bye bye. Thanks. How you doing? Can I just give you a flyer? Thank you. I'm trying to help clean up the streets with alcohol and drugs here, and I'm an addiction recovery coach. And what I'm trying to do is uh, pro bono. It's try to help the neighborhood. If you know anybody who has any addictions whatsoever, I have a method to, to beat it without even having to go to AA. I'm on channel 11. Uh, I'm also, uh, we have 150 one-hour videos on YouTube, and uh, I'm always looking for people that either want to talk about their own addictions or anything. You don't have to give your name or your face. Right. You just kind of put a dummy picture up, and you just talk. But if you're ever interested, because your story who, who I'd like to get, to get the help, yeah. My best friend's brother, and he runs these streets with heroin addict. Oh. Uh, definitely, uh, one way to start, if he's too shy to even call me, is if you look down here, you see these two web pages? Okay. He can go on there, and all my videos are on there, and there are methods on there, and uh, there are different doctors. Uh, these are all people that are willing to help for nothing. And especially, this used to be my uh, stopping ground years ago. I used to drink 10 to 15 shots of vodka, and then I tried going to AA, and AA just didn't work for me. I need to be more actively involved. I'm not sure if you ever had to go to AA for me. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it, to me it was like you just sit in a circle kind of. It's the same old, yeah, and you know what? It wasn't enough. I had to get more involved, and I got in contact with a few people. Next thing I knew, I got a, a director and a producer that contacted me, and we started creating videos on how to help people. That's where I am. So I figured by coming into my old neighborhood is the best place because I know where people are hiding and drinking because I used to do it. I lived on Pagoda, and from this liquor shop to Pagoda, I would drink 10 to 15 shots and just literally throw the bottles into the bushes and stuff because I really thought my wife or nobody would notice, but people know when you're drunk. Believe me, people oh, yeah. know. So, but I'm not knocking AA, but my method really works, and it's for nothing. It's just, you know... This is how I help myself, is by helping other people. It works. Okay. Karma, you know. So, if you can, I'd appreciate it, okay? Absolutely. Nice meeting you, sir. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you, sir. Bye bye. Hey guys, can I give you a pamphlet? A little flyer? Probably not so much for either one of you guys, but if you know anybody has any alcohol or drug problems, have them call me. Uh, I give out free help. Uh, trying to clean the streets up here. There's a lot of alcohol and a lot of drugs going on. This used to be my stopping ground. I live in the Hamptons now, but I used to drink like you wouldn't believe here. And I found a new method other than AA and how to help people. And that's pretty much just doing what I'm doing. Is if you don't talk to people about drugs and alcohol, people will listen because they see a real face and a real person behind it. AA is out of a book. You guys go to school, right? Where, how much do you learn out of a book than, than you learn by doing constantly? And by going out, I'll give you one of my cards. And I'm doing this for free. So it's nothing to gain other than self-satisfaction for me to help people, okay? So spread the word for me, all right? Thanks, guys. Thank you. And have a great day. Uh, well, they really do. They really do. Especially for the younger people. Because people like my age, we're, we're, we're already halfway over the hill. <laughs> but it's you young people. so. But I appreciate you guys helping. Thanks. Bye-bye. You too. Can I give you one of these? Hi, I'm trying to help clean up the streets from drugs and alcohol in the neighborhood. I'm a, an addiction recovery coach. If you know anybody that has any issues, if you can just have them call me. Okay. You don't have anybody, or you do? Okay. Well, here. No, I will. Oh, you don't want to call me? Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, what street? Yeah, yeah. Wellwood. Okay. I'm I'm a coach. I'm not here. I'm not here to get. No, I I used to be an alcoholic. I'm here to try to help people. I'm not trying to hurt people. Around there. Yeah. Okay. Well, that that. I know it's terrible. Yeah. Okay. You don't want to keep this. Okay. Have a good day. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. Okay, that's okay. Thank you. Here I go down this way. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. As you can tell, that last lady, she uh, she was a little nervous talking to me. Don't know why. Maybe she thought I was the cop. But. Hey, how you doing? Good. Can I give you one of these? I'm an addiction recovery coach. Anybody that has alcohol, uh, I'm drunk? Oh, okay. I haven't drank January 17. Well, good for you. If you know anyone. That you think it has addiction issues for free, I'm doing pro bono work here in Master Beach. Okay. Have them call me. Uh, I have a method how to beat addiction and live with it without even having to go to ADA. I mean, I for uh, January 17th. Uh, this year? Yeah. And, and how long have you been cleaning now? January 17th. Wow. <laughs> Do you miss it? No. No. Uh, but it, no. isn't it nice to wake up in the morning and not have those blackouts, the hot hangovers? Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't but I think, there ain't nothing I miss about it. No, I, you know, I could go into a liquor shop and I, I still, like, have those thoughts, but I know by my other half of me, which is the God side of me, says no, but. Yeah, well, yeah, you know what, it's what you're always going to have. Yeah, the cravings. They, they weren't all bad times. No, they weren't, you know, right. So, they weren't all bad times. From what I, I remember. That, that <laughs> I know if I was to have one. That's I'm it. Back right over I used to do 15 shots of vodka a day from I there to Pagoda. And I did 32 shots in two hours. Wow, you must have been just as bad as me, if not worse. Well, look, here's the good thing you're walking, you're still alive. Yeah, 
Thank good you. for you. Thanks. Spread the word. Oh, that's your mom, Pat. My mom and your mom are good friends. Yep. Pat, there's your son. Okay. Let's see. That was Pat's son. You guys probably heard Pat many a times. Sorry about the noise, but we have a bus in the background. I am going to turn around. Let me see if I can. Morning, guys. Can I leave a couple of these here for your customers about addiction, how we can help with any drug alcohol? Clean the streets up, all right? Thanks a lot. There he is. Huh? Yes. Listen, a little bit is better than too much. You know, babies have to crawl before they can run. So you do a little bit and then maybe eventually. Maybe. Yes. Maybe now it's only $100 a weekend instead of $200. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but at least you're doing better and you look better. When I saw you that first time, your eyes were red. Today you look better. That's right. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with drinking a little bit as long as you can control it. See, I, if I have a little bit, I have to drink everything. Mm -hmm. I have no control, so I don't yeah. drink nothing. But you might have control. That's okay, yeah. then. That's right. So you enjoy yourself. And you're famous because, uh, remember, I taped it and I put on audio. And people, they don't know your name, they don't know who you are, but people hear it and they learn from it. Enjoy. How are you doing? How are you? Good. Yeah, I'm going to give you one. Oh, thank you. I'm a recovery coach for addiction. I'm trying to clean the streets up for oh. alcohol and drugs. If you know anybody, by all means, give me a call. It's all for free. Uh, yeah, that's right. It's all for free. All right? Thanks. I want to get a soda. Busy, busy day today. Yeah, I've had like six interviews. Yeah, that was Pat's son. He used to do 32 shot, 22 shots in two hours. Yeah, at this bar when that bar was on, 22 shots in two hours. That's how bad he's been sober since January. And do you remember, do you remember my friend that pays two hundred dollars a weekend? Look at how pretty he looks today. He said he's only drinking a little since he met me. Yeah. It's working. Have you seen an increase also in the neighborhood of drugs and alcohol? Because we're trying to clean it up. I've noticed it in the last couple of years. I used to be one of them. I used to walk from the liquor shop to my home before I moved on Pagoda and drink 15 shots of vodka a day. So I know. That's why I come back to the stomping ground. But we're trying to clean it up, but it's hard. People, you know, we've been there, right? We know until you're ready. So, Pat, this is your son. Good for, good for him. Oh, yeah, yeah, you do look alike. Yeah. And you're a couple years older than him. He's 54. And when I look at him, he, you're he, one year. He, I'm going to be 52 this month. He looks like he's dead. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. God. That's, that, that's good. Oh, yes. That's good. Oh, yes. I was telling him, God bless you and my mother are friends for many years. Yes. Already. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. About the same age, too. She's yeah. 75. You're? I'm 74. 74. I'll be 75 soon. She'll be 75 this November 15th. Oh, yeah? Yeah, oh, yeah. so... So. I gotta wait till March. Ah, uh, well. You're, you're a youngster still. <laughs> My aunt who lives in our house on Pagoda, she's gonna be 91. She's still living. 91. Yeah. Oh, don't say that. Uh, well, you know, since I changed myself with the alcohol, I think I'm gonna be around a lot longer. He don't drink no more. No, I know, he was telling me. Yeah. yeah, but you know what? Baby steps. Everything is, in, you know. It's a, it, yeah, because if you get rid of too much, that's how you fall back into it. Yeah. you got to do a little bit at a time. Hi, how you are know you? know anybody's getting rid of a bike? He has to go to work tomorrow and he needs a bike. Uh, did you 
Get rid of one? I did, and it's gone already. Yeah, I went to Frankie Dick. He just sold three of them. Oh. Did you ask him, don't, aren't you friends with the thrift shop guy? No, I, I already asked him. Uh, oh, okay. There he is! Hey! He Yeah, I wish I had a bike for you. I really don't. Hey, hey how you doing, Cookie? Hey, how you doing? Good. Back on the streets? Yeah, back. Yeah, I'm still doing my yeah. talking to people, so. Yeah. Since I saw you last time, I came up with a new fly. I'll give it to you. This one says it all. Oh, nice. You have a fork in the road. Either addiction or recovery. I'm going to be leaving in about a half an hour. You want to speak to me in a couple minutes? All right. All right. Yeah, you're welcome. And you, you know, I got a lot of feedback on that audio because it went, it went live. Not live, but I put it on with you and six other people. But a lot of people said they're real people with real stories. And nobody knows who There's no face. There's no face. There's no, no, no address, no nothing. But it's your story that helps. So thank you so much. Where do you have to go? I got to go directly to Hot Oh, wow. So I can't buy something that's like real. How about, he doesn't have any bikes? No. Not, not a bike. Well, I want to test people. I want to do that fast. Yeah, the bicycle store guy will be open tomorrow. Yeah, I'll, I'll be at work tomorrow if I get, yeah. if I get a bike. Wow. The only, only other place to look would be like Craigslist. Yeah, that's what I should have did. That's what my boy suggested. I, I I have my tablet here that has online. I can you can use it while I'm walking the streets. Do you want to look? Yeah. Uh, let me go get it. You're welcome. Hold that one second. That's Pat Sonny. Okay, hold on. Yeah, let me get it. Go to shade, and I'll get it online for you. Settings. Go to Verizon. Hard to see here. Sure that's I mean a program that's free on there, people giving stuff away, and then or you can just go directly and buy. But I would look at the free section first. Hold on, second. Okay. 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 Let's see, free. Yeah, it's going to be hard to get a bike for free, but let's go to uh, hold on. Go to bikes. Bicycle. Take a look there. You know how to scroll up and down, right? Yeah. Wow, hey, hey God God bless you. good, good. You have a, like a program? Well, I have what I used to be an alcoholic. Okay. I still am, but now I've learned to live with it. Okay. okay. Uh, but I used to go to AA, and I felt it did more for me. So I came up with my own method, which is hands-on. Uh -huh. If you go out and you witness it, it's like being a pastor. Okay. You believe you nurture through God by helping others, and that's what my program is. In other words, I provide you videos. I provide methods on how to be alcohol and drug addiction. Okay. Uh, but it, all it is is mind over matter, and that's all it yeah. is. But do you do a? Uh, do you have a housing? No. Not right now. No. Let me get one of your. Yes, yeah, let me I run into a lot if, of people. If you go on either one of my websites, okay. you'll see everything that we're doing. Here's some help cards. Okay. They can call me. And for the pastor, I said, while well, I'm here the next 10 weeks, okay. for anyone that's related to the church or even people walking around, I'm going to do it at no charge for them. Okay, then I do a program. Uh, uh, Recovering Christ meetings on Mondays. Oh, okay. 4 30 here. 
I'll tell you. Yeah, would so you like me to come and speak one time? Yeah, I would. I gotta go pick up somebody right now. Yeah. But I want to get back with you. I want to call me. Call me. Because call I can you. also bring uh, a video that we can put on your TV and they can all watch it. Okay. That'd be the all best. Right. Okay. Check, check okay. it out. Okay. I'm just gonna walk around, okay? Hello. Can I? I don't know if I gave you one of these last week already. It's uh, I'm trying to clean up the streets of drugs and alcohol. Okay. Uh, I'm an addiction recovery coach at no charge. I'm trying to help people beat their addiction, work with it. It's an alternative to AA. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, so give that to him, and I really appreciate it. And oh, thank you so much. Appreciate okay. it. Um, I'm on channel 11, and we have over 150 uh, episodes already. We do interviews. You don't have to go on camera. You can just tell your story. So anytime you want, just call me. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, how you doing? Can I give you a flyer, please? Sure. I'm an addiction recovery coach for no charge. I'm trying to clean up the streets here, okay. help people with uh, drug and alcohol addiction. So if you know anyone, including yourself, you get in contact with me. Thanks. How you doing with that? Any luck? Okay, let me try to do something here for you. Uh, let's see. Hey, you know what? You get a fight. A 10 feet fight. Oh, I got a mountain bike. Oh, how about a mountain bike? A mountain bike will work. Yeah, but mountain bikes take too much energy. I gotta go from Brentwood to fucking walk off. How fun? There's no buses, huh? It's not that early. I'm checking Craigslist for you, but. Are you doing anything today? Yeah, I gotta go see if my dogs, I got my wash, I gotta put up the dogs. Oh, and it's Leo on you to come. Tell me if I see you. Can I give you one of these already? Maybe last week? 
I'm a addiction recovery coach. I pro bono every Sunday. I come down here for an hour. Anyone that you know that might have addiction issues with drugs or alcohol, I'm trying to help clean the streets, they can call me. And I'll give them a couple hours free coaching. And uh, we try to do it through Channel 11. And, uh, maybe, maybe you should talk to my sister. You who? Give her the phone number. There's a website. If she goes on there, she'll get a lot of educational tools that I, every day I do an hour show. Every day. And she's been through she's doing drugs. Doing good. She's fucking up again. What is she doing, drugs? Yeah. And how is she afforded? Does she have ways? I mean, because one of my shows she was about. Boyfriend all I time. was just going to say, one of my <laughs> shows was about stealing. Just to, uh, to oh, provide her boyfriend's credit cards. She'll go to PC Riches, buy all this electronic shit, sell it to a drug dealer. Were you a Marine? Yeah. Oh. Well, my Marine, because I, I used to wear that hat. I used to be a Marine. But, but uh. My son Oh, good, good, good. But I. Yeah, my oldest son wants to go in. Let him. Uh, it's funny because one of my shows was just what you just said. People will do whatever it takes. They'll rob you blind. Oh, she robbed me the other night. They chased me. Try to get her to see. my bed and had money there, a couple of dollars. It was gone. It was gone. It's not the first time she's done it. Yeah, yeah. But she can tell. She can tell. But you know what? You can sit there and lecture people all you want unless they're willing to get the help. It's never going to happen. I know. I used to be not going to do it. People usually say that she when they feel bad, when they feel bad, and then the next day they want their fill again. I used to go walk from that thr- uh, that liquor shop to my house on Pagoda before we moved and do 15 shots, just in the one walk. Well, down here you got a lot of your goodies. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I figure, I, since then my wife and I, we moved to the Hamptons, but I come down here every Sunday to try to help and clean up the streets. But I can only do what people allow me to do. Years, if they don't want to they don't That's know. right. But let your let her know to look at my website or stuff and call me, okay? Thanks. Hey guys. Can I give you one of these? I'm an addiction recovery coach, people doing drugs and alcohol. I got fifteen years old. Oh good for you. Through AA. AA. Through AA. I went through Phoenix House. Oh good for you. Well if you know anyone, let me know. Uh, I do interviews for channel eleven and uh, it's all for free. I don't charge anybody to, to try to help them. It's an alternative to AA. And it's, it's really all comes down to it's just having a right action plan on how to do your addiction on those society. But I appreciate it. If you have any stories, call me. You don't have to go on camera. What we'll do is just do an audio and you'll be on TV then, just with your story. Because your story means something to someone out there. So with 13, just 15 years. Good for you. Good for you. Keep it going like that, right? Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day. Wow, 15 years sober. Imagine that. That is really unbelievable, actually, when you think about it, folks. Can you imagine 15 years, and here he is on the church line getting bread? It's all what it is. Well, it looks like it's pretty much coming to the end because the uh, people are going into the church now. But I'm sure we got some real stories from real people today. And those, those stories are the stories that count. It's, I can sit in front of a camera and talk all I want, folks. But the stories is what counts. So I'm going to head back. And we're going to call it a day today. But know this, folks. Every Sunday, Mastic Beach, Neighborhood Road, between 11 and 12, I will be out here walking the streets that I used to utilize as my drinking grounds to, to provide people with the help that they so desperately need. Maybe they don't want, but they need. And of those people, if they could just open their hearts and open their minds, I will be here to help them. I'll be here next Sunday again. Mastic Beach, New York, Neighborhood Road. And I will continue testifying that there is life without alcohol. There is life without drugs. And if you include your God, there's life with you without the drugs and alcohol. There's a perfect life for you. And you'll see many things happen. Anyway, let's cut this off then.
Good morning, my name is Ralph Friedrichs and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today we're going to talk about drinking ages around the world, globally. You'd be amazed what I'm going to tell you about some countries that don't even require a minimum age. Totally amazed by that, but as usual, I'm going to give a shout out to a couple people. First one would be to Dr. Luis Gonzalez over at Starting Point at S T A R T I N G P O I N T M N dot com. That's Starting Point M N dot com. And you can call him at 844 414 8444. Dr. Luis Gonzalez has two sides of his business. The first side is like my side, which is to take you and walk you from your addiction to your recover daily, 24 hours at a time. He or I will never ever talk about your past. Uh, we are not counselors, we are not therapists, what we are are addiction recovery coaches and it is our job to make sure that you walk 24 hours at a time from your addiction to your recovery to teach you how to live with addiction. To make sure that you have an action plan and the proper tools on today and tomorrow fighting addiction. You can reach him at 844-414-8444 and the other side of his business he can take you that's right, yes you, and make you into or turn you into an uh, addiction recovery coach. If you possess personality, professionalism, and passion, and you have some sort of addiction, whether it being your own or through someone else, maybe a loved one that you helped, uh, certainly give him a call there and uh, he can help you through his educational program make you into an addiction recovery coach. Also want to give a shout out to Pam Hemphill from Time to Heal. Uh, that is a uh, TV talk show on Channel 11 in Boise, Idaho. Also, uh, she um, uh, focuses on recovery and she is on YouTube. Uh, she's up to episode, I believe, 18 at this point. You can find her on my website. Uh, she has her own page on there at www.clearviews.info. That's C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-S. Dot info. You can uh, see all her episodes uh, on my uh, on my uh, website, uh, but you can also go and find her on Facebook. She has an open group there, Time to Heal, and you can find her on YouTube. That's Pam Hemphill. That's H E M P H I L L, and first name is Pam. You can also go to both my websites. I just spoke about one of them, which is www.clearviews.info. And uh, that merely concentrates and gives you all the educational tools that you need to battle your addiction, that you need to help other people battle their addiction. That's on clearviews.info. And then you can also, just like Dr. Luis Gonzalez, uh, retain me at clearreform.com. And what I do is just like him, is to walk you from your addiction to your recovery daily, 24 hours at a time, never ever thinking or talking about yesterday. It is merely our job to make sure that you walk 24 hours at a time and you look forward of educating yourself and, and dealing with your addiction. So those are the shout outs for right now. Before we go any further, I just want to show everybody my uh, new business card and that business card uh, pretty much is like my phone number which is 844-405-HELP and here is the card and I want everybody to see it and you can see the help button addiction recovery help and that's what I do so it's 844 uh, 405 help let's dive right into the minimum ages throughout the world and a couple stores and this comes uh, directly from uh, I believe it's the ATF uh, I'm going to go directly to the countries that I was able to find that have no minimum age for drinking Albania, Angolia, Cambodia, Comoros, Cuba, Equatorial Guinea, Guyana, uh, Guinea-Bissau, Jamaica, Macedonia, Montegro, Morocco, Norway, Romania, Switzerland, Togo, Uruguay, and Vietnam. Those require no minimum age so people, I mean toddlers can drink there. Shame on them. I mean that is totally unacceptable. This is for minimum age of 16. Austria, Belgium, Bosnia, Germany, Georgia, uh, Haiti, Italy, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, Macau, Malaysia, Netherlands, Sudan, uh, Switzerland, and uh, Tokelau. 
I guess the other one on the no minimum age is not Switzerland, but it's actually belong, uh, pronounced Swaziland. Must be another one like Switzerland. But that those last ones were minimum age of 16. 17 would be Cyprus and Malta. 18 are all others uh, that are not going to be mentioned for 19, 20, and 21. 19, uh, Nicaragua and South Korea. 20, Iceland, Japan, and Paraguay. And 21, a good old United States, Sri Lanka, Palau, Pakistan, Oman, Kaskakan, Indonesia. Any name that you did not hear are 18. Folks, what amazes me, totally amazes me, is the minimum age is not set in the countries of Albania, Mongolia, Armenia, Cambodia, Comoros, Cuba, Equatorial Guinea, Guyana, Guinea-Bissau, Jamaica, Macedonia, Morocco, Norway, Romania, Swaziland, Togo, Uruguay, and Vietnam have no minimum age. Although it is commonly believed that the minimum drinking age in the U.S. is 21, people can legally drink below that age under many different circumstances. So again, there's a loophole in the minimum drinking age here in this country, United States. The national minimum Minimum Drinking Age Act of 1984 required all states to raise their minimum purchase and public possession of alcohol to 21. States that did not comply face reduction in highway funds under Federal Highway Aid Act. It does not prohibit persons under 21, also called youth or minors, from drinking. The term public possession is strictly defined and does not apply to possession for the following items an established religious purpose. Medical purposes when prescribed or administered by a licensed doctor, pharmacist, dentist, nurse, hospital, or medical institution. In private clubs or establishment, mind you, private clubs or establishments, there is no, uh, it, you don't need to be 21 to drink. In the course of lawful employment by a duly licensed manufacturer, wholesaler, or retailer, many of the states have chosen to uh, prohibit alcohol consumption by those under 20 have a variety of exceptions. For example, some states allow exception for consumption when their family member consents or is present. So if mommy and daddy are alcoholics and it's okay for their son or daughter to drink at 14, 15, it's okay in this country. Some, some states allow exceptions for consumption on private property. States vary in the extent of private property exceptions, which may extend to all private locations, private residence only, or in the home or parent guardian only uh, being supervised uh, over the younger person under 21. In some jurisdictions, the location exception is conditional on the presence or consent of parent, legal guardian, or legal age spouse. You see, folks, what's going on here is that there are loopholes for every law that is designed. Not just this country I'm talking about. I'm talking about globally. Do you see the loopholes? Do you see that for religious purposes, you can drink under 21? For medical purposes, as long as it's prescribed by a doctor, a nurse, or someone in the medical field that's licensed, it's allowed to drink under 21. In private clubs or establishments, it's allowed to drink under 21. And in a course of lawful employment by duly licensed manufacturer, wholesale, I guess so, if you work for Budweiser and you're 19 and they want you to taste test, or a wine company, it's okay to be under 21. What I don't agree is all loopholes. If we have a law, it should be a law for all. No loopholes. The following map show, shows the exceptions in the minimum age of 21 for consumption of alcohol in Jan, as of January 2011. And what this map, because you guys can't see the map, it consists of the states that have loopholes for under 21 drinking. And it's pretty much most southern states and way northwest states. The problem of identifying optimum minimum age drinking to reduce alcohol abuse is a serious one. It involves issues of freedom, responsibility, parental rights, religion, politics, and many other realms of life. Freedom, yes, I, I agree that we do have the freedom, but as being underage, your freedom needs to be 
uh, worked um, uh, in conjunction with uh, your parent or legal guardian, which is the chapters in the Book of Life, which is the role model. How can a good role model consent to having a person drinking? Now, I will give you this, folks. Being that most military people, like myself, at the age of 17 or 18 went into the military, if we're old enough to serve this country, fight for this country, and worse scenario, die for this country, we should be old enough to drink. So how do we separate military drinking age compared to civilian underage? You can't. So it's either you set 21 for all or you set 18 for all. Now, being that the majority of people are civilians compared to military personnel, I say you have to do it at 21 to control it as a whole and as such. But my theory here is just that possibly what they need to do for military people is that maybe not in a public forum allow underage drinking, in other words, under 21, but if you're serving in the military, they should have on the military basis allowance for people 18 and up to start drinking. Again, if you're fighting for this country and you're willing to die for this country, you should be allowed to drink under 18 in this country. That's my thinking. Um, I am uh, definitely against drinking at all, but you know, I, I, you probably heard my interviews and I said to someone yesterday, there is nothing wrong with drinking as long as you can control the amount you drink and, and if it's a sociable drink. However, if you're a person like my like myself that has an addictive personality when it comes to drinking, then it's totally uh, not for, for you to do or for me to do. Um, uh, drinking goes back into the Bible of drinking wine. But like anything, everything has to be in moderation. When you have to wake up to drink and you have to go to sleep and drink to sleep and you have to drink all day, you have an addiction. You have an addiction and you need help. And you need to stop denying you have addiction. Let's get back. In reaction to these problems, the president emeritus of Middlebury College created an organization, Choose Responsibility, to promote discussion and public debate about how best to reduce alcohol abuse. It has suggested a number of ideas. Choose Responsibly believes federal legislation should not penalize states that choose and to participate in pilot alcohol educational programs based on minimum drinking age of 18. Thus, its groups believe that one, states that present a plan for education or educating and licensing young adults that can maintain low levels of fatalities while lowering the drinking age or to be granted a waiver of 10% reduction penalty for a minimum of five years. Number two, states should create a mechanism to collect relevant da data required to monitor the effects of the change in the law. Number three, states should submit these statistics to Congress or its designate, along with analysis of the effects of the waiver from the inception and may not request either an extension of the waiver. Last but not least, number four, individual state proposals must include guidelines for eligibility and suspension of licenses proposed in model programs. Choose Responsibly also proposes new approach to alcohol education programs similar to driver's education in that it would be A, be taught by a certified alcohol instructor trained uh, specially to cover the legal, ethical, health, and safety issues of curriculum and skilled in dealing with young adults. So instead of just having Mr. Seaver of the art department teach you how to drive in school, they need to have a certified alcohol educator that's also certified to teach people how to drive a car. Number two, consist of at least 40 hours, hours of uh, instruction with the most time spent in the classroom setting supplement by session of co community involvement. DW Court Hearing Safe Ride Taxi Programs Community Forms. Number three, require partnership between home and school. Entail a final examination that a subject must pass for licensing. Provide accurate and unbiased alcohol education for both drinkers and abs uh, abstainers. The alcohol educational course cur curriculum world 
be a model for reality-based alcohol education, involve collaboration between state, school, and home, create a basis for responsible choices where alcohol is concerned, and wed those with expectation of responsible behavior to the system of certification and provisional license for 18 to 20 years old. Be developed and implement a state-by-state -state basis. Provide accurate, truthful, and unbiased alcohol education. It would acknowledge the social reality of alcohol in American society, but it would advocate neither absences nor consumption. It would seek only to create a basis for responsible choices where alcohol is concerned. And this is a group called Choose Responsibility also uh, uh, that designated all these uh, uh, amendments to the laws. Upon successful completion of the curriculum, each student of the program would receive a license entitled to recipient to all privileges and responsibility of an adult alcohol purchase, possession, and consumption of alcohol. So what they're saying is they want to come up with another Besides all these other loot, besides having, you can drink underage in religious purposes, medical purposes, private or uh, private clubs or establishments, or uh, if you're employed by Budweiser or a wine company, another loophole, and that would say that if you passed, choose responsibilities course, that you would be allowed upon successful completion of this curriculum. Each student of the program would receive a license entitling the recipient to all privileges and responsibility of an adult alcohol purchases, possession, and consumption of all alcohol. So at 18, because they passed this course, they should be able to drink. Folks, there's way too many loopholes in the laws. You either set it for 18 for everyone or set it 21 for everyone. The only loophole that I personally, my personal belief should be, that if you're serving in the military, as I did, at the age of 18, you should be allowed to drink. Again, I don't condone the drinking, but what I am saying is there are people that do not, like myself, or maybe even you, have an addiction to it. There are people that can drink in a social environment. There are drink people that can drink responsibly. So what I'm saying is that that should be the only loophole. Choose Responsible has suggested changes in the state policy to reduce alcohol abuse. It points out that states are allowed to legislate any of the following exceptions to the law prohibiting, prohibiting purchases, possession, and consumption of alcohol for ages under 8, 21. For establishment and religious purposes, we discussed that. That's totally ridiculous. For private clubs, totally ridiculous. When a company by a parent, guardian, or a spouse of 21 or above. Folks, if you have a mommy and daddy at home that are alcoholics, it's okay for the mother and father to say, go ahead, children, you can go and drink now. That is poor role modelship, and we're going to discuss that like we always do in all my videos. The majority of states take advantage of these allowances by legislating exceptions to possession or consumption of alcohol by minors under 21 and to furnish furnishing of alcohol by legal aged individuals. For example, 30 states currently allow for parents to provide their children with alcohol in the privacy of their own homes. 30 states. And then people wonder why our statistics are so high for fatalities, DWI. But in the remaining 20, parents are barred from providing their children with alcohol until the child's 21st birthday. Those who adhere to the strict rules at home in keeping with the state laws are, in fact, preventing from intru introducing young alcohol, uh, young adults to alcohol uh, in a controlled home environment. Good role leadership. This often regulates initial drinking experiences to settings where there is little but no supervision or guidance and a great deal of peer pressure to experiment. Parents across the country should be allowed and encouraged to provide their own children and their children's friends with alcohol and extent to the context of teaching and modeling responsible decisions about alcohol and its use. Folks, uh, folks, I mean, that, that's totally ludicrous. How can parents be allowed to give their children and their children's friends alcohol. There is much research evidence to suggest that these changes could reduce the 
extent of alcohol abuse. And so what they're saying is by you allowing your children and your children's friends to drink at your home, you're eliminating a possibility of your children going out there and experimenting and possibly getting uh, um, addicted to it. How about you, as the parent, start helping, like you're supposed to be, help your children through their chapters in their book of life from zero, their birth, until at least 18. From zero to 18, these four things should never happen in your home. Never smoking in front of your children, never drinking in front of your children, never using profanity in front of your children, and never ever, not just in front of your children, but never ever physically abuse. That should never happen in your home. These are the four things that have to, I mean have to happen in your home. You have to show love. You have to show respect for each other. You have to show compassion for each other. And you have to show passion. Four things have to. These four things don't. What this is saying, this, this alcohol article from the ATF is saying that Choose Responsibility, which is a pro, uh, an organization, thinks that by you allowing your children or giving your children alcohol and your children's friends when they come over, you are now preventing possibly for them to go out and be curious and preventing um, alcohol abuse. First of all, what right do you as the parent have to give your children's friends alcohol without consulting their parents? You have to be a good role model, folks. Remember, there should never be smoking in your house. If you need to smoke, go outside and do it. There should never be drinking in your house in front of your children. If you need to drink, go outside and do it. There should never, ever be trailer trash, foul mouth, profanity being spoken in front of your children or in your household. It's bathroom language. It's not in the Webster Dictionary. If you need to do it, either go into the bathroom and do it there or go out of your house and do it. That language, that profanity belongs in a toilet. Why don't you take your profanity starting today, October 6th, 2014, and flush it down the toilet. You should never ever physically abuse anyone at your home or anywhere else. If you do, you need to seek counseling and therapy. And if you're the victim of physical abuse, you need to call the authorities. Have the authorities take the person that's abusing you out in handcuffs and seek help, possibly come back into your home as a better person, then have the authorities take you out in a body bag. Because a punch and a slap here eventually becomes a knife or a gun, if not controlled early enough. What you should be doing every day is you should show love to your family. That's a role model. Show love. Show respect. In order to get respect from your spouse or from your children, you have to show respect. Show compassion. Whether it's your spouse or your children, if they're having issues, you need to show compassion. You need to show that you are the role model. You are the children's hero. And show passion. Be passionate about spending family days out or game nights with your family. It all starts like that. It starts in the book of life. It starts at zero when your ch children are born and you are responsible to help write their chapters. Each chapter is one year. So from zero to 18, it is your responsibility to help them. It is your responsibility to write your own chapters in your book of life. Mine started in 1961 and ends whenever my life ends. I am now up to chapter 52 in my book of life. What age? Well, what chapter are you in? And what are the previous chapters before October 6, 2014? What, what do they look like? I can tell you mine were less than desirable due to my alcoholism. Not due to my being a human, because I always was a caring and good person. However, my alcoholism took me down the wrong fork in the road, as my flyer shows when I'm 
out there uh, talking to people. My flyer shows a fork in a road. One says addiction, one says recovery. I chose addiction for so many years, but in 2013 when I hit rock bottom, I reached for my higher power, my God. In 2014, that fork in a road became the recovery fork. Let it be yours, October 6, 2014. Re or Continue writing your chapters in a book, but rewrite new chapters with new you. Today, it is never too late. If you had a whole weekend of drinking, and today it's Monday and you feel lousy, you need to change that. Folks, during my interviews, you probably heard, but I, there's one thing that you didn't get to see on my interviews is the fact you remember my first interview with this one gentleman who was drinking to $250 a weekend and beer his eyes were red that that was my first interview in Mastic Beach on Neighborhood Road and he was slurring his words well folks yesterday I was walking into the laundromat on Neighborhood Road and the first thing I noticed was him and his better posture and clearer eyes and better speech so I spoke to him, and you heard it on the interview, I spoke to him, and he said that he's been cutting down. Folks, this is what I'm talking about. If I can just help two people, me being one of them, and possibly being you, the second one. I know I made a difference in this person's life because I kept going towards him. I kept handing him flyers. I spoke to his family about it. And he, in smaller steps, is changing. Now, I will tell you, if you're drinking that kind of alcohol on the weekend, you do have an addiction. He, of, of course, was saying he can control it. I will take a half a loaf of bread, then no bread at all. Analogy translated is, if he cut down to from $250 to $100 a weekend in alcohol, my mission is working. My mission of helping people to learn that alcohol and drugs are no good for you and you can't live with them. Maybe in two or three weeks when I run into him again, he might be down to maybe $50. But as long as I don't run into him and he's up to 400 or 500 I know I am affecting someone out there. Let it be you. Why can you not, starting today, October 6, 2014, accept the fact that you might have a problem? June 22nd, 2013, I finally set, accepted that fact. For too many years, I was avoiding that because I thought I could control my life. I thought I could set my own direction, but I couldn't. And probably you can't either. There are so many different methods to, to deal with uh, alcoholism. I'm only going to mention three to the top of my head, and one would always be AA. The 12-step program, the 90, 90, 90 meetings in 90 days. Try AA. They've been around since 1936. Another method would be my method, which is educating you through videos, through articles written by doctors, psychologists, psychiatrists, through uh, other um, uh, reading material, through going out in the streets and talking to people, real people with real stories. That is my method. I choose to call it almost on-the-job training. I am training myself to be sober daily. I am not training myself in a classroom setting. I'm not training myself reading out of a book and the only book I will read out of when it comes to my sobriety is called the Bible. I am training myself with daily educating myself daily videos daily talking to people Sunday interviews that's my method and it works if you have an issue where you need to be supervised you need to go to a clinic they have the 30 60 90 day clinics go there check yourself in but no matter which method you use whether it's AA whether it's my method or it's the clinic you need to be aware that no matter what, you can never ever go back to your old abuse. And no matter what, you can never ever think that you're healed. I sit here before you very humbly to tell you I have an addiction still. 
I will always have an addiction. The difference is I have learned to live with it. I have learned to live with it so comfortably that I can walk into a supermarket, into a 7-Eleven, into an Applebee's or Friday's or whatever and not even think about possibly drinking one ounce of alcohol. It's not always been that easy. My first week or two was the hardest in my life. Thought I'd never succeed. And as Cookie said on one of my interviews, the temptation will always be there, and that's no doubt, because that is the one side of my brain that's controlled by the booze side and by the devil side that will always try to tempt me. But the other side, which is the cortex side of my brain, which is controlled by me and by God, is so strong and so much stronger than that other side that it will never, ever, ever happen. I will never, ever give up on continue educating myself on alcohol abuse. I will never ever give up on myself and I'll definitely never give up on helping you, wherever you might be. But it all starts today, October 6, 2014, for you to say, I know I have a problem. And when you say that, that's when you'll start seeing changes. And when you say that, it can't just mere, merely be words. You have to know that you have a problem. It's a disease and you cannot control it. And you definitely cannot ever fight addiction without including God. Yesterday we were taking a ride. My mother and my sister and my wife and I to my little sister's house over in shore in Long Island. And I brought my tablets for my mother to see the one video that I shot maybe a couple weeks ago called What Does the Bible Say About Alcohol? And why did I even do that one? It's because my point to you folks is that you cannot battle addiction without God included. You can have God without addiction, but you cannot have an addiction that you want to battle and you want to win and you want to live with daily without including your God. You need to include God for guidance and direction because you obviously, if you have a problem and you are not controlling that problem, you obviously cannot set your own guidance and direction when it comes to your addiction so you need to get the higher power involved and you will see astronomical changes once you quit the drinking and the drugging and you include your higher power in your daily thoughts your daily activities you will carry yourself different you will think different you accept other people differently and most importantly is you are different the difference is that you lack one thing that is has controlled you for all these years and you lack uncontrollable addiction. You still have an addiction, but you are controlling it. With the grace of God and your strong thinking, you can learn to live with the addiction forever until your end of time, until your chapters in your book of life are done. My chapters all started differently at the age of 51. 51 chapters. Out of that 51 chapters before I became sober, you have to think at least 34, 30, yeah, maybe 33 chapters included alcohol. So 33 chapters included alcohol. So at 51, it started changing. Can you imagine if God lets me stay on earth until I'm 85? that I can even out the balance where I had 33 with alcohol and 33 without, if God allows me to be around, that will be the outcome. And if God doesn't allow me to be around for that, that is His will. I was talking to my mother yesterday, we were sitting at McDonald's, and I told my mother, because she's nervous about all sorts of things like ISIS and uh, Middle East, and I said to my mother, those are things you cannot worry about daily. When your time is going to come, it's going to come because God knows today, October 6th, exactly when my mother is going to die, when I'm going to die, when my wife is going to die, my child, children, grandchildren. It's already pre-planned in his book. You can't avoid it. So why go through life worrying about things? Why? What you should be worried about is the love in your home, the respect in your home, the compassion and the passion in your home. What you shouldn't worry about is the Middle East and stuff like that. 
What you should also worry about is eliminating the alcohol, the drugs, the smoking, the profanity, and the physical abuse. Those are the things you should be worrying about. What you should worry about is are you a good role model? That's what you should worry about. With God giving you guidance and direction and you're admitting that you have a problem, you will see changes tremendously. You will. I promise you that. And you can text me anytime at 631-599-0218 or you can call me at 844-405-HELP anytime and we can talk about this. Folks, I make these videos not for entertainment purposes, but to help me and help you daily on your addiction, on your path of fighting addiction, on your path of living with addiction, on your path of becoming a better human, a well-balanced human. That is the sole purpose of these videos. It takes a lot of work and a lot of time to do these videos, but the rewards are tremendous for me. I'm sitting here a sober person because of one aspect and that's these videos amongst other reasons we were talking to my wife and I yesterday and I said I've created now 148 videos and, and let's set just say on an average each video is an hour which them some are more and some are less so on average an hour and then you add another four to five hours to prepare and finish that's a lot of time and effort put into this but the rewards are tremendous the rewards of my interviews on a Sunday that my wife and I would travel 33 miles to go there and 33 miles to come back to get maybe four or five interviews but the rewards that I reap from them are tremendous but more importantly the rewards that I'm giving out to people with education on, on prevention are even more tremendous ran into a boy and a girl yesterday on neighborhood road in Mastic Beach who I knew because they're they were pretty young not that young maybe 17 18 but I knew that I needed to talk to them and when I talked to them I gave them one of my flyers they thanked me and you probably heard this they thanked me because they said we need more people like you it is people like them and other people that make you want to do this for hour after hour after hour because the reward that you get from helping others besides getting the reward of helping yourself then is tremendous but it all starts in your home and it starts in your heart you need to eliminate the negativity around you because in order to have a positive life you need to have positive people around you and positive thoughts and you definitely need to battle your addiction once you have conquered the biggest hurdle of your life and that's the fact that you stop denying and you say I am ready and you reach up to your higher power and ask God for guidance and direction and from that point on you come up with an action plan what is your action plan going to be is it going to be AA is it going to be something like I do is it going to be a treatment center or is it going to be all three combined that is what you need to do but start today doing it October 6, 2014 can be a new chapter in your book of life. It is so easily started and all it is is for you to finally say, I've had it. I've had it. I want to be a better person. I want to be a better role model. I want to be a better husband, a better wife, a better father, a better grandparent. I want to just be better. I want to live longer. Eliminate the drugs and alcohol. More than likely, you're going to live longer. Eliminate the smoking. More than likely, you're going to live longer. And if you include God in your living, at the end of your time, you will know that when you need to stand in front of the, the gates of heaven, that you have tried your best to be the best human you could. That's it, folks. I mean, honestly. It all comes down to you. I can sit here and I can preach to you and I can go over all statistics all day, but it comes down to you. I can walk the streets and neighborhood road and do the best I can, but it comes down to you. I had a 
past one of the pastors yesterday asked me to come on a Monday at 4.30. He runs a class about addiction. He wants me to speak there. I have to go to the village meeting to speak there. These are all things that God is creating, opportunities, and he's not creating them for me to benefit. He's creating them for me to be the mouthpiece of reason on how to live with addiction. The only benefit I get out of doing any of this is the benefit that I'm daily educating myself and the hopes that I'm saving a life out there from possibly uh, an overdose. There are way too many overdoses out there, folks. To the point that even if I wanted to cry about it, I would, I would never stop crying because it, you look left, you look right, up and down, and there are overdoses, overdoses, overdoses everywhere. Overdoses due to lack of educating uh, on, on how much you can really do as far as drugs and alcohol before killing yourself. Uh, overdoses due to people just giving up on life. Overdoses due to stress, relationship issues. But without the grace of God, no matter how bad your life is, it will never get better unless you ask him to help you. Guidance and direction. The minimum age in some of these countries like Albania, Angola, Armenia, Cambodia, Comoros, Cuba, Guyana, Jamaica, uh, Monte, uh, Morocco, Norway, Romania, Togo, Uruguay, and Vietnam. There is no minimum age. Shame on those countries. United States, Sri Lanka, Palau, Pakistan, Oman, Kak Kazakhstan and Indonesia are 21. 16 is Austria, Belgium, but Bosnia, Germany, Georgia, Haiti, Italy, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, Macau, Malaysia, Netherlands, Sudan, Switzerland, Tolokia. Those are 16. All others are 18. Let me clear this one more time. I truly believe that if you're serving in the military, that should be the only exception, not in a public forum for drinking under 21, but on the base. On a military base, under 18, uh, under 21, you should be able to drink. If you're 18, 19, or 20, and you're serving this country, and you're drinking on the base, it should be allowed, because if you're serving this country, and you're willing to die for this country, you're certainly entitled to drink. Responsibly. All... These other things that I talked about, I don't agree with. I don't agree with for religious purposes, under 21 you should be allowed to drink, for medical purposes, or because you work for a wine company, a Budweiser, or in a private club, you should not be able to drink. Laws have to be set for everyone, possibly, with the one exception. And that would be really under the military law anyway, because it's on a military base. But I'm saying for civilian, open forum, 21 Period. No exceptions. How do you feel about this? And text me, 631-599-0218. Facebook me. I have clearviews.info. I have um, a clear reform. I have an open group, clear reform. You can Twitter me. You can email me. You can. Uh, my email address is clearreform at yahoo. Two R's in clear reform. C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M. Google me. Uh, dogpile me, uh, dig me, blogger me, let me know. And you can certainly do this in an open forum on Facebook. You can mention me. I want to know what you feel about 21 drinking age, and I want to know if you agree there should be exceptions to that law. And if you do agree, please tell me why you agree that there should be exceptions. The only exception I say, and that's on a military base, for military law would be because if you're serving this country, you should be able to drink under 21. 18 to 21, not under 18. But that's on a military military base only. They should not, the military personnel should not be able to walk outside the base and be able to drink under 21. The law should be 21 for everyone in a social society. Let me know. Remember about the role model be a role model. Be the hero. Do that. And remember what I tell you, folks. At night, we all wear slipper shoes or sneakers. And when we go to bed, we lay, leave them by the edge of our bed. The slipper shoes or sneakers. Tonight, push them under your bed. Push them under your bed. That way, tomorrow morning, when you wake up, you need to go on your knees. 
and you need to pull those slippers, shoes, or sneakers from under your bed, and while you're on your knees, thank the Lord that you're alive another day. For every breath you take right now and you're able to breathe, there's someone in this world that's taking their last breath. For every time you open and close your eyes, there's someone that's closing their eyes for the last time. Thank God for every day that you're on this beautiful earth and let the sun shine into your heart and your home and you will get nothing but positive results. Get rid of the negative people. And when I say get rid of them, I'm not saying get rid of them physically. I'm saying avoid the negative things in life. Concentrate on the positive things in life. Because a sober today, I guarantee you, will give you a better tomorrow. And if you believe what I'm telling you in here, it will become clear wherever you are. It will become so crystal clear. But you need to start by admitting you have a problem and then reaching for your higher power. And it all has to start not just with us individually, but it has to be done on a national level and on a global level. These tolerances on these statistics are irresponsible to have no minimum age in certain countries and 21 uh, in other countries that is there has to be a set thing uh, a set age and I do realize that every country is going to make their own thing but in this country we should not be able to allow our 21 and under people to drink in a religious setting or a medical setting or a private club or even uh, at a Budweiser plane or a, wine, or a wine tasting they should not be able to drink there Tell me what you think. Folks, you know how to get a hold of me. It's 844-405-HELP. My text is 631-599-0218. My uh, websites are clearviews.info and clearreform.com. Dr. Luis Gonzalez is at startingpointmn.com. Uh, his phone number is 844-414-8444. You can find Pam Hemphill uh, on Time to Heal. TV talk show, they focus on recovery on YouTube and on Facebook and also on my website. She has her own page, www.clearviews.info. You can find all three of us on with those informational uh, snippets I just gave you. But more importantly than finding us is you need to find yourself. Look in the mirror today after this and look at yourself and say, do I like what I see? Does my family truly think that I'm a hero? Am I a good role model? If you can answer no to some of those, it's time for change. Are you drinking excessively? Do you depend on drinking? Are you doing drugs? If the answer is yes to those, you need to look for time for change. It's then you need to drop to your knees and say, I have a problem and I can't control it myself like I had to do, because I couldn't. And there is no shame in admitting that you have a problem because alcohol is not something that you choose to do alcoholism it's a disease but like any disease cancer whatever the disease might be hiv everything needs to have an action plan to at least try to heal and give you longer life but if you don't control your alcoholism your life will be shorter if you don't control the consumption of your drugs and alcohol your life will be shorter to the point where you might even overdose and then you leave your loved ones behind second guessing them what happened was it because of stress was it because of a uh, relationship issue or was it just because you were so reckless with your own consumption these are the things you need to worry about start today october 6 2014 start today changing your life and let me help take your life back god bless you and have a great day Good morning and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today is September 4th. It's about 3.30 in the morning. I just want to share with everyone something this morning. Uh, I saw a demonstration uh, maybe about a month ago in reference to our dark side and the power of prayer. If you continuously pray over and over and over again, things will eventually become clear. Although that was a lot of times when we pray to God, we don't get answers right away. Uh, but if you continuously pray, over and over things become clear so the demonstration involves this bottle and if you see the inside of this bottle is all dark liquid that represents our dark side and this cap represents our limitations so we as a human which is the bottle have limitations which is this cap so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put this bottle into the sink and we're gonna do a demonstration so let me put that there 
I'm going to turn the camera around so that everybody can see it. And hopefully you folks can all see it now. Okay, so you see the bottle. I'm going to turn the water on. Okay, so now everything inside is dark, which represents our body and our inside. And what I'm going to do, and this clear water represents our prayer, so you see the continuous water running. I'm going to now, as the prayer, uh, as we're praying, I'm going to lift our limitations, which is the cap. And we're going to slowly add our prayer to this. We all go through dark times. I mean, I've had some dark years. I just didn't understand everything that was happening. I'm going to admit it that I'm not a super patient person. I tend to want answers right away and know what's happening and when I, uh, what I can do to solve it. I don't like not being happy and confident about things. It's just not who I am. But when I get down, it takes a lot for me to get back up. If we pray for a sign, which is this, the water is prayer. But just give up because we feel like God's already heard our prayer and he knows what we need, but he hasn't answered. It's kind of like when we were kids in a toy store and we kept asking our mom and dad for toys, but we never got any results. Yeah, it never worked for me either, but you get what I mean. Anyway, that is exactly what's happened to me in the past years. I have prayed and prayed and prayed, but haven't really gotten any results. The answer I thought God would give me... Uh, and especially in the time of, of frame, I thought my problems would be fixed, which was all before 2013. Then, in 2013, my cap of limitations was lifted. This is the cap. Remember this now. was lifted off the bottle, which is my body. Here is where I will just show you how that worked for me. So basically, we all have dark sides, which is what's in the bottle, was in the bottle. We are facing, and we take the limitations off our mind, which was the cap I lifted. Don't limit what he can do, because we have to just trust in the Lord. That sometimes, even after we pray and we just give up, and it is often why we get defeated. However, even though nothing has really changed, we just keep praying. That's the prayer, the sign of the prayer, the flung Lord. Just keep praying and never, ever give up praying. And if we do that and devote ourselves completely to the Lord, He will pull us through. The dark times will go away and we just have to be patient. I know it's hard. Being patient truly is a virtue. But by never, ever giving up on prayer, it's going to show you that God will eventually answer all your prayer. And the more we pray, which is this water going into the bottle, one day everything will become clear. You see how clear this is now? That is the power of prayer. Folks, I think that demonstration says it all. If we had a bottle which represents our body and the bottle, uh, everything was dark on the inside. And the water coming out of the faucet represents the prayer day after day after day. Just keeps adding to the darkness which was in the bottle. Eventually, all that prayer has to turn what was dark inside this bottle, which is our body, has to change and become as clear as this water in here. That, folks, is the power of prayer. Hello, folks. My name is Ralph Friedrichs. I just want to share my story uh, with um, my situation back in 1981 in the United States Marine Corps. I was sitting in a chapel during boot camp and a uh, chaplain tapped me on the shoulder and asked me to come into his quiet room. As I was walking into his quiet room, I had no idea what he wanted from me. It was then that uh, God was setting my life in motion. Uh, so the chaplain sat me down and he says, Ralph, I've noticed that you like to help people, you motivate people, you're always walking around with a smile. And I wanted to know, this is the chaplain saying this to me, I wanted to know, Ralph, would you like to uh, volunteer and become a lay leader? And of course, I had no idea what a lay leader was, uh, so he explained to me what a lay leader was. It's somebody that is a liaison between the recruits and the chaplain. So when the recruits have issues, problems, or anything uh, like that, they go to the lay leader and, uh, I mean, excuse me, they go to the chaplain as the lay leader uh, to, to uh, let the chaplain know of the situations that are happening. It was then, in 1981, that God already had a plan for me, and and what when there from from that point on was that God realized that no matter how long it would take 
for me to achieve what God already knew what was going to happen to me, he would let me go down into the worst extremes in life. So from 1981, as a lay leader, and I'm going to show you the medal now with a lay leader, the front and the back. This is the back of the medal, and then the front looks like this. So in 1981, at Par Paris Island, South Carolina, when I became a lay leader, God already had my life set in motion. But again, he wanted me to set my own course in life. So I went down the years and the course of my life and, and uh, did some of the worst things possible to my own body uh, through alcoholism. God already said to himself, well, I'm going to wait for Ralph to uh, get close to hitting rock bottom. So from 1981 until 2011, which is 30 years, God came to me again and he said, Ralph, are you ready to continue helping other people? That's when I um, formed Mastic Beach Outreach 2011. And what that was is for uh, older people and uh, mentally and physically challenged people that my wife and I would help them by giving them clothing, food, uh, possibly like in one case, tires for someone's car. And um, so God said, okay, he is getting better, uh, but he's still not ready to do what I really wanted him to do. So in 19, excuse me, in 2011, I continued my alcoholism uh, to the point of 10 to 15 shots a day. As time went further, two, two years down the road, it became worse and worse with my alcoholism. In 2013, God finally put his big hand on my head and says, are you ready now? That is when I hit rock bottom, June 22nd, 2013. I reached out and I finally admit that I had an alcohol problem. It was then when God lifted me up and, and set my life in motion for today, September 2nd, 2014. So from 2013 until 2014, I continue educating myself and you, others, through my websites, through my uh, my uh, videos on how to battle with addiction. And God saw this and he said, he, he said to himself, Ralph is still continuing helping people. So in between 2013 and 2014, as, as time was going by and, and I proved to God that I was really reforming myself, uh, that God uh, introduced me to uh, Dr. Luis Gonzalez. I had been toying with the idea of becoming a substance abuse counselor until I ran into uh, an article about recovery coaching. So I thought it was very ironic that God had planted Dr. Luis Gonzalez from starting point, that S-T-A-R-T-I-N-G-P-O-I-N-T-M-N.com, 844-414-844, into my life. Dr. Luis Gonzalez gave me the educational uh, programming to turn me into a recovery coach. So between while I was training for Dr. Luis Gonzalez to become a recovery coach and today, my father comes from South Carolina to visit and we're looking at my shrine, which my wife calls a shrine, which is all my Marine Corps ribbons and medals. And my father asked me, Ralph, what is this medal for? What is, what is this particular medal for? And I then said to myself, here's where it all came together. I finally realized what that medal stood for and how it influenced me in my life. It was back in 1981 that God knew already that I would eventually, towards the middle uh, or 60% uh, of my life, be out to help other people, to continuously help people, to motivate people, to coach people. So it was from 1981 to 2011 that I ran my life to the ragged ends, to the pit of the worst. And then from 2011 to 2013, even worse than that. And then June 22nd, 2013, finally helped myself up with the grace of God. And in 2014, became an addiction recovery coach. And all that epiphany came to me due to my father asked me what this stood for. This particular silver medal. When he asked me that, it all finally came together, that God had bigger and better plans for me. And this is what I'm telling you folks, there is a plan for you. No matter what the plan might be, you don't know what it is, but there is a plan for you. It's just a matter of you figuring it out. So why don't you let me help take your life back? Thank you. God bless you and have a sober day.